I'm Alia Merla with BioCompare, and I'm here today with Mark Brown from Andor Technology. Good morning. Hi, how are you? So I see you have an imaging system here. Can you take me through a little bit of this? Yeah, it's pretty uh, straightforward in lots of ways if you've been involved in this kind of technology. It's a very compact system, as you can see. Um, and let's start here at the sharp end where the sample is sitting. We've got it currently on an Olympus IX81 microscope, and we've got no transmitted illumination. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is simply for convenience for the show. Normally you would have transmitted light so you could do DIC or phase contrast. Mm -hmm. So the specimen uh, sits here. Normally in our systems this is capable of taking a 35mm petri dish or a, or a stage top incubator or slides. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a piezo stage which allows us to make very small movements in Z about, with about uh, 3 nanometer resolution and with about 100 microns of movement. There's also a uh, 500 micron version available. So this sits on the stage top here. Cool. Now this sits not only on Olympus microscopes, but actually on any customer's preferred infinity corrected scope. So that would include instruments from uh, Nikon, Leica and Zeiss as well. And uh, we'll show you later a new introduction we're making with our products as well. So here we have a standard C mount on the side port and then we use the dual spinning disc Yokogawa confocal scanner as the uh, unit of choice for this system. So this unit provides very low background and because it's laser illuminated we have very specific illumination of the specimen and that gives us pretty good confocality. Mm -hmm. We take a few liberties with the Yokogawa and we remove its final stage projection optics and we replace it with our own high quality apochromat projection optics. We put in here a very fast uh, emission filter wheel mm -hmm. that allows us to switch in 50 milliseconds mm -hmm. between different filters to allow us to do fairly rapid uh, sequential image acquisition at different wavelengths. And then we make our own uh, customized C-mount optics adapter here. This one has a magnification of 1.2, which allows us to fit the full aperture of the CSU onto the Ixon camera. As you know, the Ixon camera is an EMCCD camera that Andor's pioneered in the Ixon Plus version, cool to minus 80 Celsius in air. Um, it runs at 10 megahertz, it's back illuminated, and has a quantum efficiency in excess of 90% from 480 through to 700 nanometers. So across most of the range that our customers are interested in imaging. So what distinguishes this camera from an ordinary CCD? Uh, the, m the main difference here is the very high quantum efficiency because mm -hmm. it's back thinned um, and there are no structures between the sensing and the, uh, and the photons that arrive there. Um, and or also has a unique uh, vacuum sealed head mm -hmm. that's permanently vacuum sealed and this allows us to get down to very low temperatures and it's at running at those low temperatures that you see the primary benefits of electron multiplying technology and electron multiplying technology is a technique in which after sensing the signal as it's shipped or clocked off the chip uh, goes through a, a gain register which is run at elevated voltages and as it makes the transition between the gates, uh, there's a probability of, a, of what's called impact ionization. And this amplifies the signal in a probabilistic way. So you end up with potentially a gain of in excess of a thousand times after you've made five or six hundred transfers. Excellent. And that allows us to amplify the signal above read noise. So read noise is no longer the limiting factor when it comes to imaging. Very cool. So this can essentially go with any microscope system? Exactly. Uh, we quite commonly supply the system from the C-mount outwards mm -hmm. and the customer deals with the microscope company. It doesn't only work on in inverted microscopes on side ports, you can also put it on upright microscopes mm -hmm. such as those used in physiology and you can also put it on bottom ports uh, as well. So it gives you a lot of flexibility and the beauty of this confocal system is it only takes up one C-port of the microscope mm -hmm. and that allows you the freedom to bring in other illumination techniques through other ports in the instrument. Oh, great. So how is all of this controlled? It all, it's all controlled through um, a PC that's sitting under the table here. It's a 
not exactly a vanilla PC, it's a high powered PC mm -hmm. with a RAID controller and so on. Um, but the main, the heart of the system is in here, in our revolution uh, fridge, as we sometimes call <laughs> it. And uh, this is our laser combiner 400 series. This allows us to integrate four solid state lasers into a single rack here. So the lasers are all collimated in the beam, in, t in the uh, combiner, and then they're delivered through this little single mode optical fiber cable here that just screws in here. And that's a, good, a big advantage from a safety perspective mm -hmm. as well, because there's no laser light zipping around the lab. Mm -hmm. And these are class 3B lasers, they're pretty powerful. We can have in excess of 50 milliwatts coming out of the mm -hmm. fiber, so it's something Actually, to be careful yeah, with. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I see that um, it looks like Andor makes the camera, makes the uh, control equipment here. Yes. It must be quite adva advantageous to the customer to have um, a single vendor for all of this Indeed. equipment. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the one of the advantages we bring to the business. We also make the precision control unit here that actually does all the timing. Mm -hmm. It does direct control of the piezo. Uh, it controls the AOTF in here. That's what, another point I should make. The laser combiner has an internal acousto-optic tunable filter. This is a very rapid device and it allows us to gate the laser in two microseconds. And so by using a technique we call active blanking, we can completely minimize the exposure that the cell sees to light. Oh, great. So it's, uh, and it's actually ultimately synchronized. The camera is driven from the PCU and then the camera's fire pulse, which is the pulse that tells us when the camera is actually collecting light, is used to gate the laser. Mm -hmm. And so the laser is only on approximately plus one microsecond before the camera starts exposing and one microsecond after. Mm -hmm. So you really do have the tightest possible control. I don't think it's, it's possible to do any better than that in terms of control. Excellent. So what if I'd like to look at two channels of fluorescence at the same time? Well, we've got two options for that. The first is that we supply a device called the Opto Split, and what this does is it uses a dichroic in the path of the image to split the image into the two wavelengths, mm -hmm. and then that is projected onto two halves of the same CCD, and then we can acquire simultaneous images. But the, there is a drawback of that, and that is that you basically end up with half the horizontal resolution yeah. that you started out with and a smaller field of view. Mm -hmm. So actually the same resolution but a smaller field of view. So what we've done recently is introduce this device here that we call our G DPC, it's very imaginatively <laughs> referred to as that, the dual port camera adapter. This unit, as you can see here, has two C-mount adapters matched to two uh, identical Ixon cameras. And with the appropriate adjustments in here, we can get these aligned pretty much to pixel mm. precision. And inside this unit here, we have a cassette system that allows us to introduce the dichroic or indeed even a polarizing beam splitter. We have a number of customers who are interested in looking at different polarizations on the two cameras. Of course, this is a more expensive solution, but we like selling more cameras. <laughs> but also, it does give you full resolution. So it sounds like the system is very customizable. Absolutely, yeah. That's great. <laughs> So I see that you've got some software going on here too. Does that come essentially with the system? Uh, IQ is, is it's called Andor IQ. It's our software that supports all of the instrumentation mm -hmm. you've seen here. It's been built up over 15 years and um, it supports an enormously wide range of hardware. And we're adding more and more to it all of the time. Our goal here is to create an open environment for the user to select which hardware components they either have it from legacy systems or buying new and then to be able to package it all together and make it work mm -hmm. seamlessly under and or IQ. Okay. Well, I think that's all the questions I had for today, but I okay. want to thank you very much for spending some time thank with you. us. Pleasure. <laughs>